We're going to go live right now to Tel Aviv, where Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is addressing the calls for a ceasefire and speaking to reporters. Let's listen in. Sir, Michael Bivong, uh, Channel 2 German Television. I would like to ask you, there's a widespread discussion, especially among the relatives or the hostages, about the course of military action you have taken so far. And the question, if this is the only way to free the hostages, of course, you uh, are very uh, successful in freeing one hostage on Sunday. But there's a widespread criticism that this doesn't uh, allow uh, place for other negotiations. What do you explain to the relatives of the hostages for this cause, relying mostly on military pressure? I met uh, twice with the families of the hostages. You felt their anguish. I felt their anguish. Uh, I know this sense of, uh, it's not only the sense of loss that bereaved uh, parents have, it's a sense of uh, not knowing, of continuous, continuous anguish. So I, f I fully understand their concern. But our common assessment of all of the, uh, uh, not only the cabinet members, but also all the security forces in the military, is that the ground action actually creates the possibility, not the certainty, but the possibility of getting our hostages uh, out. Because Hamas will not do it unless they're under pressure. They simply will not do it. They only do it under pressure. This creates pressure. Uh, and again, we obviously, uh, greeted one hostage with uh, open arms after yesterday's uh, successful action by Shabak and the IDF. But we're committed to uh, getting all the hostages back home. We think that this method stands a chance. It's a goal that we're committed to. Channel 7 Australia, Chris. Chris Raisin from Channel 7 Australia. Just Hold second, on. Chris. Mr. Prime Minister, Chris Reason from Channel 7 Australia. I want to ask a question from my country, and the people in my country are looking at this and wondering, they agree with you, they want you to chase down Hamas and terrorism, destroy terrorism in, in this region, etc. But people can't understand why so many have people, civilians, have to die in this process. You argue that Hamas is putting them up as human shields. Is that a good enough excuse? Are you inflicting here uh, collective punishment on the people of Palestine? Not a single civilian has to die. Hamas merely has to let them go to the safe zone that we created in southeastern Gaza Strip. There's a safe zone there. Not a single civilian has to die. But Hamas is preventing them from leaving, keeping them in the areas of conflict. So I think that you should uh, direct your questions to Hamas. But I can tell you one thing. We're going out of our way to prevent civilian casualties, not only by asking civilians to move, calling them to move, arranging a place for them to be, which is safe, also putting in uh, uh, humanitarian support, providing them with the means, with food, uh, with water, with medicine, and so on. Uh, I, I think that this question should be placed on Hamas. And the more it's placed on Israel, the more you're going to see this repeated again and again and again. So other groups, other criminal states, other criminal organizations will use civilians as human shields. We cannot give immunity to these terrorists. We cannot give immunity to these savages. We have to do everything we can to minimize civilian casualties, but we cannot give up the fight because then I think this uh, will have disastrous consequences, not only for the future of my country, but for the future of your country, your countries. This is a s battle of civilization against barbarians. The barbarians will do something that civilized countries will never do. And civilized countries will make every effort to prevent this. And I'll give you one example. And I'll end with that because I have to go to uh, manage this war and lead it. In 1944, the Royal Air Force bombed the Gestapo headquarters in Copenhagen. It's a perfectly legitimate target. But the British pilots missed. And instead of the Gestapo headquarters, they hit a children's hospital nearby. And I think 84 children were hardly burned to death. That is not a war crime. That is not something you blame Britain for doing. 
That was a legitimate act of war with tragic consequences that accompany such legitimate actions. And you didn't tell the Allies, don't stamp out Nazism because of such tragic consequences. They went to the end because they knew that the future of our civilization was at stake. Well, I'm telling you right now that the future of our civilization is at stake. We have to win this war. We'll do it by minimizing civilian casualties. And may we succeed. Thank you. We've been listening to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu speaking with reporters addressing calls for a ceasefire.